Okay, so uh, what I want to show you all is um, a little bit about, say, landscape planning, uh, city planning, and working with a, for a floor plan. So one of the first things that you need is to get, again, the lay of the land. So let's figure out where, you know, things like bodies of water are. Oftentimes, if you have a city, um, you know, it tends to be built close to water unless it's completely landlocked. So, you know, choose an area where you'll have your water. Um, so if I have, in this case, I've got a city with a waterfront. Um, and maybe I'll have a few roads in as well. So I'm, I'm choosing a, a couple of ways to get into this city. And I'm not going for buildings right away. I'm just going for a few roads and a very, very simple structure. Okay, so another thing that I like to do when I'm developing a, a large place is to develop districts. So oftentimes your industrial district, your fishing district, you know, things... Industry requires water. You know, if you have a steel mill, you need water to quench things. If you have power plants, they need water. So a lot of times, industry tends to be closer there. Also, thing sometimes you may have residential di districts and whatnot, um, which are close to the water. But you know, think about how you're going to zone the city, and you know, figure out your inroads in there. Also, you need things like highways to you know move most of that main traffic out. You need ways for um, you know, you need little roads that lead, you know, uh, from the from the main highways to these fast factories and to these different districts. Um, you can have our agricultural districts as well, but th things like um, you know farming and whatnot tend to be out, you know, way off in the distance. Uh, you don't sometimes they may be closer to things like rivers and streams, but not really next to lakes, unless you know. Depends where you go. Every city is really different. Um, it's really dependent on the natural resources that you have, and um, then there's things like uh, airports and whatnot. Again, place these things, um, you know, think about where these things are placed in your city and you can emulate that. But the whole purpose of this whole floor plan thing is, you know, to eventually get some sort of um, top-down view, like a map. And once you're done with that, you can just use a warp tool and I can scale this down and scale this this way. So in Photoshop, you'll probably wind up using something like the transform tool. If you hold the control key down in, in, in uh, Photoshop, you can uh, drag the, the control points around. And then, uh, you know, you can add a little bit of perspective to it. So in this case, I've got that water off in the distance. And I'm, you can choose, you know, sort of what, what camera angle you, you're going to go for. You know, it takes a little while to get all the points exactly where you want them. I'm trying to get rid of that tilt, that Dutch tilt in there and just recenter everything. And again, it doesn't have to perfectly fit in your frame. You know, sometimes you may only be doing a small section of the city. Um, you know, figure out what, what works well. But there we go. Apply the transformation. And now that I have that, I, I have this, you know, this whole waterfront here. So I can kind of figure out more or less where my horizon line is. And I can draw the water going off that way. I can be begin extruding some of these buildings upwards or extruding some of these shapes up. And there you have it. There's, you know, a really, really fast way. You know, everything is now ar ar arranged and grouped around the, the roads. And this is how you get all your streets and buildings and everything in pr proper perspective. So you need the roads first. Well, you need your natural resources first. You need the lay of the land. You need to figure out where your building, where, where your hills are, you know, and that is something that you know just is visible in any cityscape. And also, this is where I guess you can take some of these different blocks and you can choose to make some of them taller than others. But you know, it's just a different way of approaching, you know, a city structure. I know this is a really short demo and whatnot, but it's just a, a different way of thinking. Um, I don't want this video to go on for you know longer than a few minutes, but just a, a little bit of food for thought when you're planning out a city. Um, this also applies down to smaller scales. So if you have, say, a room, you know, I can again figure out what's the footprint of your room. You know, some rooms are going to be rectangular. Some may be ha have a corner cut out of them. You may have things like fireplaces or um, large ducts in the walls, which take up. You know, so the idea is. Start with your footprint of your your room. Uh, cut out all the chunks that are you know kind of uh, that you can't build in. You know, cut out any any 
um, sections that are taken out of the room. If there's a, a fireplace, then you know, cut that section out and mask it off. Um, figure out how people enter and exit the room. So in this case, again, you know, you make a simple floor plan for where doors are. You can also include the arc, the opening arc of a door. Um, this way you avoid have, you know, you tend to make it so that the door opens towards the wall rather than opening into the room and smacking someone in the face. Um, you know, if you have desks and stuff, you can make sure that the desk is not obstructing the doorway. You know, you want to get a good, smooth, you know, walk through, you know, you, know, you don't want to have people bashing into furniture and stuff. So again, this allows you to really, uh, carefully place and plan all the different, you know, parts of your room. You can place your carpets and your light fixtures. So, you know, I can, I can figure that I want a light fixture right here. I can have another doorway here. I can plan where I want my windows. So again, doors, I always put an arc, a swinging arc on that. Uh, windows would be here. Um, there is kind of a, a drafter's notation for all of this. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not uh, entirely, uh, I'm, I don't know all of the, uh, dra the, the, the standard drafter's notation. So, you know, that's something you can research if you really want to get um, serious with this stuff. And, uh, you know, again, I, I've got another floor plan here. You know, I've got my rug placed. I've got my, my you know, fireplace there. I've got, you know, everything is now more or less, you know, where I want it. I can choose how thick the window sills are. And, you know, I've pretty much used up all the space I, I've got in this little living room thing. And uh, now I can, again, I can just bring up the uh, transform tool and just warp everything until it's uh, at the first the correct perspective that I want. You know, maybe I want to see those windows. So in this case, I'm looking in through the windows, but I can uh, I can flip this whole thing. So here, let me just uh, swap all the points around. I just have to uh, crank everything. There we are. Okay, so I've spun the whole room upside down and or, or turned it around 180 degrees. We're now looking towards the windows. I'll just keep stretching things up until they're the shape that I want and get the angle that I want. So essentially I'm controlling the floor. I'm distorting the floor. And now that that is where I want it, I'll just apply the transformation, get back to my brush tool. I'll extrude up. The first thing I extrude up are the corners of this, this, uh, this room. And I can figure out where the top part is. Everything's now in proper perspective. Um, you know, I get the walls in there. I've basically taken off the front, you know, the front door wall, but I can still draw in the uh, the doorway if I if I want. It gets a little disorienting, so sometimes it's better to just you know do a simple cutaway. Uh, you can choose the level of the windowsill. Uh, there we are. We just figuring out where the windows themselves are. So I've put in all the necessary posts for the windows. There's another one here. Now that I have that, you know, I can still make adjustments. You know, I don't if, if I feel the windows are just not quite the rate the correct ratio that I like, you know, I can still adjust them. Um we had a little bit of maybe a bookshelf or something like that here. But again, you know, this is just um a really simple way to get, you know, something that looks three dimensional and yet has a working floor plan. Um I, now you can start putting in your potted plants and whatnot. It's a, it's a pretty good and fast way to work. You know, it's where you put in your trees and your small house plants. And then you can also put things like your Venetian blinds. And at that point, you can put in things like crown molding on there. But anyway, I don't want to get too much into detail, but this is, again, you know, a way to lay, to lay things out in a functional manner so that they appear like they could work, that someone could live there, and there's enough room for them to walk around. It's, it, it allows you to create working sets, you know, like working movie sets or working. Um, and also you can really see, and it's like, well, I, I could do with having a picture here. You know, I can, I've got these big blank walls. You know, I can, I can put some pictures on the walls, or I can put a big poster, or I can put a, you know, that's, that's what's nice about this uh, this way of working. So anyway, uh, that's it. Really short 10-minute uh, demo, and uh, we'll talk to you later.